When we've made our enemies our friends, is it not then when we've destroyed our enemies? This was President Abraham Lincoln's response to those who were calling for the destruction of what remained of his enemy to the south near the end of the American Civil War. So why would the president want to befriend his enemy? I suspect he knew that if he kicked them when they were down, it would only reinforce their hatred. Or maybe he knew that if he helped them during their vulnerable time, it would be difficult for them to continue the fight. Whatever the case, no one knows for sure if his decision to rebuild the South is the main reason why the country has remained united since. But had the president acted on the advice of his peers, it's possible that the Civil War would have only been the first of many. So, I, I searched elsewhere in history to find a better example to test this idea, and I think we find it in the way we handled Germany following World War I and World War II. After World War I and the German defeat, they were put under heavy sanctions, right? And we stripped them of their industrial and energy producing bases. Was this, this is exactly what the country needed to rebuild and to rebuild its economy. So without this, the economy collapses and it opens the door for a charismatic leader to lead the country with promises of uh, restoring national identity and pride on a path which would spark World War II. And this time we know the costs would be much higher. So after World War II, there's a different attitude towards Germany, this time with hopes of helping the German people regain a trusted and welcome position on the world stage. Uh, resources and support are pumped into the country and we know that they make their way out of it. Today their economy seems to be setting the standard for Europe, but what's most impressive to me is that after rebuilding our two most determined enemies of World War II, Germany and Japan, they have since become some of our most loyal allies. That's fascinating. So if it works so well on, with international conflict, doesn't it seem like it would work well for the domestic problem of prison recidivism? I believe it can. As a matter of fact, I believe it's happening right now. Here are some of the numbers. The national recidivism rate for the United States is somewhere around 50%. Now, recidivism is a failure number. It's a number by which uh, men leaving prison return within the first three years of release. The Ohio average for recidivism is at about 30%, better than the national. Now, in Marion, as you've heard all day, we have a culture here which fosters success. I'm going to give you the success rate of Marion Correctional. The Marion Correctional success rate is 80%. And there's at least one program. Okay. And there's at least one program within Marion which has been measuring its success over the last 10 years showing a recidivism rate, or not, I'm sorry, a reintegration rate or success rate of about 88%. Something's happening. What is it? What it is is something I never would have expected to find here. Let me explain why. When I was younger, I found myself underneath uh, mentorship of a guy a trusted adult who taught me that as a Hispanic I was disadvantaged in this country because economic, social, and political systems were in place to ensure that I couldn't realize my dreams. I was taught that all who were in power got there through cheating and oppressing others and that if I would taste success in my life I would have to do the same. He taught me that I would do this through the drug trade. And not only did I learn the ins and outs of the drug trade, I learned how to deal with prison because it just seemed to be part of the package. right? So my worldview's messed up, I'm angry at the world, and at 17 I leave home, in with my then 15-year-old girlfriend, and we find ourselves over the household uh, of her brothers and sisters, and with hopes of getting custody of her five nieces and nephew from foster care. Four years later, still unable to get uh, the kids from foster care, uh, in my desperation and determination to restore our family, uh, death, and prison are no longer deterrents from me jumping into the drug trade. Ten years after that, we see the kids on through high school, you know, the brothers and sisters. We got two of the five kids back from foster care, but I wasn't ready for what would happen next. You see, in that time, we had accepted the fact that we couldn't have our own kids, so you can imagine our surprise at the births of our two boys, Ralphie and Eloy. Yeah, great kids. And so I really got angry because even though all I was doing was absolutely wrong, 
I would have to be saying goodbye to them not long after the miracle of their births for the next 15 years mandatory time on a nonviolent offense of drug possession. To make matters worse, their mother would do prison time as well. I couldn't spare her from that and she would ultimately get deported. So I'm on my way to prison expecting that it's going to be everything that I was told it would be, that it would be a very violent place, life threatening, and that I would have nothing to look forward to except how to become a better prisoner how to become a better criminal, how to become a more determined enemy. Now that would have been the case had I landed, any, landed anywhere else in the country in, in just about any other prison, but I landed here in Marion, where as I've told you before, and you've heard before, this culture fosters success. So this culture that befriends and rebuilds the incarcerated would be impossible without supportive administration, without supportive staff, contractors, but especially the volunteers. So what I found here have been character-based programming, faith-based programming, stuff that helps us get to the core of our criminal motives, right? Get a, get a grip on that. And what I've also found has been skill training, such as uh, uh, programming for those who are willing to put the work into it, uh, digital art, such as web design and uh, video editing. And the programming, by the way, is taught by a volunteer who comes here freely on his own time to give the skills to those who are willing to put in the effort. But what has deterred me, what has transformed me the most has been the volunteers who come here offering their love and support at a time when most people have written us off as undeserving. Their courage has transformed this once very, very determined enemy. And the, tr the, the byproduct, really, of my transformation is that now I'm concerned about your well-being. I'm concerned about your welfare. I'm concerned about your security and your safety. And I'm concerned about wanting to be a part of your community someday, a healthy community. So how does that work? I believe that. Um, President Lincoln's idea stems from his belief that we should not treat others as they have treated us, but this, we should rise to the next level and treat others as we would like to be treated. So what happens? Should we continue to ostracize people to the fringes of society? History has taught us that peace is a two-way street. History has taught us that when we cast people and disregard them as undeserving of the most basic of human needs, like security, safety, survival, belonging, then other things take root. Other things like resentment, isolation, disillusionment. And these are the recipe, right? This is the recipe for continued conflict and future crime. But history also shows us that when we put aside ill feelings to befriend and rebuild a former enemy, we gain loyal allies. Look, the reality is, I'm not the victim for why I came here. I'm absolutely responsible for what I've done, but we have to ask the question, is it solely the responsibility of those who are at the losing end of war and crime to contribute to lasting peace? 90% of the nearly 3 million people incarcerated in the United States are returning home. They're going to funnel back into communities all over the United States, near yours. What are we going to find? Are we going to find a post-World War I type of community which ostracizes people to the fringes of society, where uh, they struggle to survive and resentment grows? Or are we going to find a post-World War II type of community which rebuilds and befriends a former enemy? What do you think? Thank you.